So growing up, of course, I watched all the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons on reruns. The one that stuck out to me though, was the Jetsons and its view of a futuristic world. Now in today's world, we may not have things like flying cars, moving walkways, or robot maids, but we are starting to see some autonomous cars. We do have AI powered voice assistants and robotic vacuum cleaners. So almost there. And as a bonus, we can get yelled at by our overly aggressive bosses via Zoom. Jackson, what are you doing? At least I got that part right. So for today's video, we've partnered with Akara to show you my five favorite simple automations that you can set up to make your house feel like you're living in the future. Now, you might actually remember Akara sensors from way back in my second video I ever released. That video showed you how to set these sensors up with SmartThings. Now, I've moved past SmartThings since then, and now I'm primarily a Home Assistant user. So today I'm gonna to show you how to set up automations in Home Assistant that are driven by these sensors. Now, all these Akara sensors are Zigbee protocol-based sensors, so they'll work with most any hub out on the market, especially if that hub supports the Zigbee 3.0 protocol. Now these are simple automations that almost anybody can try. For today's video, I'm gonna have everything running through the new Akara M2 hub. Now this hub has some other cool additional features on it, including infrared transmission, so you can use this to control devices like TVs or air conditioners. And it also has an ethernet port in case you have poor Wi-Fi signal. Now I have most of my existing Zigbee sensors either on my old Xiaomi hub or running through Zigbee to MQTT. These sensors will work with Zigbee to MQTT along with most other Zigbee protocol hubs and sticks, but it's always a good idea to make sure that your hub supports Zigbee 3.0 for future proofing. Now I have my M2 sensor integrated directly into Home Assistant. Now there isn't a direct Akara integration in Home Assistant, but when you plug one of these in, it shows up as a HomeKit hub, which means Home Assistant can natively add it by going to the integrations tab and installing it from there. Now, one limitation is you'll only be able to see the Zigbee devices that are supported by the HomeKit protocols. So one of the things that is not supported is using the infrared emitter on this hub to control devices like, again, like TVs or fans. To do that, you'll have to do that in the Akara mobile app or one of its integrations with voice assistants like Google or Alexa. All right, so let's jump into my five favorite simple home automations to make your life easier. So let's start with a simple one. My family loves to open up the windows when the weather's nice outside, but a lot of times they'll end up leaving them open too long, end up wasting energy when the air conditioning's running with the windows open. Now, you know you're a dad when you utter the phrase, shut the windows, we're not air conditioning the entire neighborhood. So for this automation, all we really need is a door and window sensor. Now I've already got one installed on this window here behind me, and my Nest thermostat's already integrated with Home Assistant. If you need help setting up your Nest thermostat and Home Assistant, I've already got a video done for you. If you check out the cards up here or down in the description below, you'll find a link to that video on setting up the Nest using the HomeBridge integration. All right, so before we hop into the automations, one quick thing I wanna point out is for all these automations, except for one, I'm gonna be using Blueprints. And if you're not familiar with the Blueprints, it's a new principle in Home Assistant that allows you to quickly share and modify existing automations that other users can put out there. So if you go to your settings, automations and scenes, the last tab or any of your installed blueprints. You can click this link down here for discover more blueprints. It'll take you to the forums where it'll help you search for the various blueprints that are out there already. I've got a links to all of these in my blog post and these will actually have the little import button on them after I get the video finished. So you'll be able to import these directly into Home Assistant and there's a lot less coding involved then. So for our first automation, number five, let's look at opening the window, disabling HVAC. That's a simple blueprint that I've got links to here. You'll just click on the link to, to import it. And when you bring it up, it looks something like this. You'll give it a name. I call my window dash disable HVAC. I always have the item that triggers the automation in front of what the name of the description is. And then you can select the blueprint, but obviously I've already got the blueprint selected. And for this one, it's very simple. We just selected the playroom window sensor from the list. Now, one thing of note is this has to be set up in a as a type of window. And I'll show you here in a second how to set a binary sensor to type window. So we can set the window sensor, which is called playroom window. Minimum opening time. This is how many, how many seconds from zero to 120. So I've got mine set at two minutes. So what will happen basically is if this playroom window is open for more than two minutes, it will turn off my thermostat, my Nest thermostat, and then it'll automatically turn it back on and put it into the existing mode when this window is shut. So I've also selected my climate device from down here, which is the, which is the domain climate. To change a binary sensor to the type window, all we need to do is find the binary sensor in your in your dashboard. So when you bring up your 
entity and you want to modify it, you click the gear in the corner and then right here it says show as. This allows you to change the device class. For this blueprint, it needs to be device class of window. There's no other types that will show up in that automation. If you are wanting to do more than one window sensor to trigger the same automation, you'll need to create a template group, which is pretty easy to do and there's a great example in the blog post already. So one of the best parts about these door window sensors is the fact that they're super tiny. You can see here the comparison between the car sensor and one of my other Z-Wave sensors. On my windows, this allows me to tuck in both the sensor and the magnet into an extremely tiny space that most sensors wouldn't be able to fit. In addition, on all of the Acara sensors, the battery life is excellent. Even though these simple sensors really only give you the open and closed of whatever you have them attached to and the battery level of the sensor, you can end up doing a lot of great automations with it. Of course, you can use it for things like security in your house, knowing if one of your doors or windows gets opened. You can also attach it to an appliance, to know if somebody's opened up, say your dishwasher, to know if those are clean or dirty dishes, or even your refrigerator to keep your kids from snacking late at night. Now we use them on our internal doors when our kids are smaller so that we know if they try to escape in the middle of the night, which just recently this has happened to us with one of my twins figuring out how to open his bedroom door in the middle of the night, which means he can now freely roam the house in the middle of the night if one of us aren't notified, which is of course a lot of fun when you have twins. I also saw a great idea by another smart home YouTuber that attached one of these to his console controller. So every time he picked it up, it powered his TV and his system on and set everything the way he wanted it before he gamed. So this automation is gonna seem very similar to our number two automation, but it's quite a bit simpler. This one is great if you have a pantry or closet that's got a light in it. Now this will need to be an AC light that can be controlled with a wall switch. Now I'm gonna pick on my kids again, but they have a tendency to come downstairs open up this pantry door, turn the light on, and leave it on all day long. I have replaced countless bulbs in this fixture up here because they have come through and left the light on, or they've closed the doors with the light turned on and then nobody knows about it, and it's been on wasting energy all day long. So for this automation, it's triggered by opening up the pantry doors and having the light automatically turn on. Now I've got it set, this light will turn on when the doors are opened, and if they're left on for more than 15 minutes, the light will turn off. Plus, when you close the pantry doors, the light turns off automatically. Now this is great for saving energy and also just not burning bulbs out. Plus I have a dimmable switch on here which allows me to set different light levels for different times of the day. So if you come downstairs for a midnight snack, you won't get blinded when you open the doors. So for this automation, you're gonna need a door and window sensor and either a smart bulb or a smart switch. Something like this Akara relay switch will work perfectly fine in here. All right, so for number four, the closet pantry light, we've got another blueprint. This one, door control with light delay. This is a simple blueprint. Again, we give it a name. It's control light with door is the name of the blueprint. And so we just select which door we want it to be triggered from. And then we select which light we want it to control. This down here is just the delay that prevents you from opening and closing the door and having the light stay off. What this does is if you open the door and immediately close it again, it'll wait this many seconds for the light to turn back off again. In my case, I've got it set to nine seconds. So it's the minimum. So this is the basic example of that. I also have my own automation that I've written, which is a very simple automation that you can copy right out of here and import this into your automation, creating a new automation, blank, bring it up to the top right, hit the three dots, go to edit in the YAML, and then just paste my example in right over the top. And if you wanna switch back to visual editor, you can do that by clicking the edit and visual editor. Now this is a simple automation. All it does is if the pantry door sensor is on, for 15 minutes, then turn off the pantry light. This is that example I said where I don't want that light to stay on all day, all night if that pantry door is left open. So pretty simple. If you're looking for a more advanced automation, we'll cover that in step two, but I've got it listed right here. It's a great blueprint called Yet Another Motion Automation. This one allows you to set different scenes for different times of the day. We'll talk about that one in number two. All right, for our third automation, we're actually upstairs in my master bathroom because we're gonna take a look at creating a humidity controlled fan. Now, my bathroom has an exhaust fan both in the toilet room and also in the main bathroom. As you can tell, this time of year, mid-June is quite hot and humid here in the Kansas City area. So it's nice to be able to, when somebody takes a shower, be able to automatically have this fan turn on and exhaust some of that hot, humid air out. Also, this is sort of the highest point in the house, so a lot of the hot air accumulates here. So we can take it and kind of ventilate some of that hot air out very easily. So for this automation, we're gonna take a setup which involves one of these sensors. These are the temperature humidity sensors, and they also have barometric pressure as one of their outputs. So if you pair one of these up with a relay switch, you can use it to turn on one of these exhaust fans. In addition, you can use one of the Akara relay switches to operate your humidity controlled fan. 
Now in this bathroom here, I actually have a Z-Wave relay switch. Make sure you use a relay switch and not a dimmable switch because things like fans do not work on dimmers and you could damage either the switch or the motor of the fan. All right, so for number three, we've got humidity controlled fan. So this is a another fairly simple blueprint that we wanna import. So this blueprint requires you to select a humidity sensor. So any humidity sensor that you have in your house, you can select from this drop down here. The reference humidity is the threshold point. So if it exceeds 60% humidity in the room, that's when it triggers this automation. Or if you want to have it a difference between the two, you can select another humidity sensor. So if you say you have a humidity sensor in another part of your house and you want to prevent this from turning on if just because the humidity is high versus a shower being turned on, you can select that here. I just have mine set to a reference of 60. And then you have some tweaks you can make about how many percentage points it has to go up or down for it to turn on or off the fan. So and we select the fan switch here. And again, it's a simple automation. If this sensor exceeds this threshold, it'll turn the fan on. And if it drops below that number, it turns the fan off. Pretty easy, but pretty powerful to automatically control your fan so your bathrooms don't get extra humid. One of the best parts about these sensors is the fact that it gives you temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure all in one tiny package. These allow you to place them discreetly in any part of the house to get climate data. I even have one slipped into my humidor to keep an eye on humidity level. Another option for an automation would be using the temperature sensor on this to then if the temperature is high enough in your house in the particular room or if it's a high enough difference between the first floor and the upstairs, then run the exhaust fan as well. You'll see another example of that in the blog post as an optional automation. Another classic automation is the motion controlled lights. Now the master bedroom, our master bathroom and the office bathroom all have motion controlled lights. This is especially handy in places like toilet rooms or bathrooms you don't commonly use because a lot of times people will go in there and use them and then as they leave to shut the door, they'll leave the light on. My son does this all the time. But of course, a lot of our rooms like my bedroom and the office also have additional motion activated lights. Also, when you walk into the office or the bedroom, depending on the time of the day, you get a different light level. And if you have different smart plugs, switches or bulbs in your rooms, you can have different configurations of lights turn on depending on the time of the day. Now my bedroom and my master bath, they both have dimmable light switches, which allow us to have different levels of light at different times of day. Now in my office bathroom, I have the new Akara relay switch which actually is kind of cool because it comes in four different flavors. You can get it in a single or a double rocker, and they have versions that work for both neutral and non-neutral setups. So it's a very flexible system. This one I'm running with the neutral version. One of the nice things about the neutral version is it allows you to do power monitoring so you can see exactly how many watts your lights are consuming in that particular room. Now on the other hand, you have the motion sensors. Now, I've had a lot of the basic Acara ones for a while. I've had both the versions with and without Lux sensors. Now the Acara motion sensors are really flexible because of their extremely small size and different mounting options. Now this doesn't have the mounting bracket on the bottom, but most of these come with a nice flexible mounting bracket that allows you to stick it pretty much anywhere. Plus these new P1 motion sensors have a five year battery life, which far exceeds my Z-Wave that require me to change batteries every six to 12 months. Another great feature of the new P1 sensor is the fact that you can have adjustable sensitivity for the motion. Now this is something that I've had on some of my Z-Wave sensors, but they're physical jumpers. You have to go open up the case and unplug and plug. So no more jumpers on this one. It's all done inside the app. So in the Akara app, it'll report battery level, motion, and Lux. Now in the HomeKit integration portion of it, the Lux value does not come through. And as I mentioned earlier, there is ways around this if you want to grab an API key. So our most common location this is used in is our master bathroom. It has a separate toilet room with a dedicated light. Now this is nice because when I go into the bathroom in the middle of the night, I can have it turn on at 5% and I'm not blinded when I try to use the restroom. So for number two, we're gonna use a very powerful blueprint called yet another motion automation. This one I use all throughout my house in different places. This allows you to select different scenes at different times of the day. So it's a little bit more complicated, but I'll show you a quick example that I use in my bathroom to automatically turn on the light and to dim that light at different times of the day. So my office bathroom, I have a relay switch, so it just turns on or off. In my master bath, I have a dimmable switch. So in that case, I have the ability to set different light levels for different times of the day. So for this one, it's got a quite a bit more selections here, but you don't need all of these options. So first we need to select the motion sensor and the target light, which has the nice entity picker right here. Then you can select the wait time to leave the light on after the last motion is detected. And you know, you'll have to tweak this based on your motion sensor. If you're using the new P1 sensor, you can set different lengths for that motion timeout. So you can set the sensor will only go back to off after five minutes. You can change that setting in there. If you have one of the older ones, you can use the automation to set that threshold. So say 
for example, if the if the motion sensor turns off after motion after one minute, you can set a delay on top of that. So if this motion sensor turns off after one minute of no motion, this adds an extra two minutes to the end of that. You can set what's called an automation blocker. This can be a helper you create in Home Assistant that if this is turned off, then it will automatically disable this motion automation. They also have the inverse version of that. If you want to select the sun elevation, you want to have it, it as part of the control, you can select that here, but I'm not using it. And then you have different times of the days, you can have up to five different scenes selected. So I skip the ambient scene and I've created these scenes, which I'll show you in a minute, that basically just have different dim levels for that light. So from midnight to 6 a.m., it's slightly dim. At nine o'clock, it will start doing bright, so it goes to full brightness. At 7.30, it goes back to slightly dim. And then at 10 o'clock, it goes to very dim, which is basically like 5% of that light. So what that does is you can create any of these scenes, which I'll pop over to my scenes in a second. And then at, at any point in time, any motion triggered after this point in time, it'll select that particular one. So we'll go over to my scenes and we'll see all of these master bathrooms. So you could set these. So if you had multiple lights in, in, in a room, you could select different lights in that group and set that scene and then have that scene activated at a different time. So you create each of these scenes, whichever ones you want. And then when you go into that automation, you can select those scenes here and set it to whatever you want. You can see this is an extremely powerful blueprint that you could use for different functions throughout the house with just a motion sensor and light switches. Now for our last automation, this is one of my most used ones. It's automatically turning on and off the lights and devices in my basement. Now we've set our basement up as sort of an additional play area for our kids, especially in the super hot weather like right now or during the winter time. The problem is, is they'll come upstairs, shut this door and leave everything on down there. So the next time we head downstairs, we'll find the TV on, playing Coco Melon or something, and all the lights have been on all night. So I built an automation. When this door is closed and there's no motion in the basement for 10 minutes, automatically turn off the TV, stop the Google Home from playing anything down there, and shut down both the basement lights and the lights on the stairs. Another cool thing that this has allowed me to do is when this door is opened, it sequentially turns on the stair lights and then the basement lights so you can see when you're going downstairs without having to turn on switches or anything. So for this automation, you're gonna need a door and window switch and a motion sensor. In addition, you're gonna need some smart bulbs or smart switches. In my case, I've got a Z-Wave smart switch downstairs and some Zigbee smart bulbs in the two fixtures going down the stairs. All right, for our last one, these are actually automations that I wrote. So again, you can just click on these to copy them and paste them into your home assistant. So first we'll look at the power off automation. So in the event that the basement motion is off for 15 minutes, and the basement door is closed, then it will call the service, turn off all of these lights, sends, a, sends me a telegram notification to my phone saying it turned off the basement lights, and it also does a text -to speech to my kitchen display and tells me it turned off the basement lights. So in addition, if I wanna turn off a TV, all I've gotta do is go to action type. So we select call service, media player, turn off, and then we can say choose entity, and we can select the basement TV. And that'll power that TV off. We also can select the basement home, and it will turn off any music playing down there. All right, for the lights on, simply it's just triggered by the basement door being opened. Then it turns on the first light right above the door, turns on to 100%, waits two seconds, turns on the, the, the light at the bottom of the stairs to 100%, waits two more seconds, and then turns on the basement lights. So this adds kind of a cool cascading effect down the stairs as I open that door. So pretty neat, pretty basic. All right. There you go, there's my top five simple automations to help your home feel like it's from the future. Now, if you have a favorite automation, please leave it in the comments below. If you do run into any problems, you can either leave your question in the comments or hop on our Discord server. I'm pretty active on there and that's probably the easiest place to get help with an automation or a home automation question. So if this video did help you, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps push this video out to others to help them. And another big thank you to Akara for sponsoring today's video and providing some of the gear. If you're interested in any of the products shown in today's video, I've got links to them in the description below. Now, if you'd like to see some other home assistant projects, click on the playlist right here. And as always, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video.